Are Singapore is doubling down on plans to decarbonize its power sector and enhance grid infrastructure to be more responsive to changes in supply and demand. Deputy Prime Minister Gan Kim Yong made those announcements at the Singapore International Energy Week, a gathering of policymakers and industry leaders in the power sector. The task ahead to transform the global energy system is monumental. Singapore may be small, but we stand ready to play our part in the energy transition. To increase the sustainability of our power supply, we will need to develop and study every possible decarbonisation pathway while safeguarding our energy security and ensuring cost competitiveness. One idea the Energy Market Authority is studying is the gathering of excess electricity generated from solar panels or battery storage systems in homes, factories and offices. These will be coordinated by a so-called virtual power plant to operate as a single unit and supply electricity to the grid as conventional power plants do. It's all part of a not coming roadmap which will be launched later this year to set the direction for future grid capabilities. For instance, by reviewing investments in grid connections to include emerging energy sources like solar storage systems and EV charges, or by developing a grid digital twin to enhance planning and control of energy resources. Grids play a critical role in the distribu distribution of energy. In some countries, Economic growth plans or decarbonisation plans have been hampered because electricity cannot be transported from where it is produced to where it is needed. We must therefore continue to prioritise timely grid connections, improve the responsiveness of grid capacity to demand signals and develop new grid capabilities for a heterogeneous energy mix. Businesses could get cheaper wholesale electricity prices under an expanded program by the Energy Market Authority. The scheme rewards firms when they shift power consumption to off-peak periods so that the grid will remain stable at all times. For transport operator Comfort Delgro, charging its electric taxis just got cheaper. As part of a trial, its 1,000 EV charging stations will reduce charging speed during peak periods in the afternoon. In turn, that would cut the demand for electricity island-wide and bring down wholesale energy prices. Incentives generated from cost saving by participating in this uh, program could be potentially pass on to the taxi drivers, in turn accelerate the mass EV adoption for the e-taxi fleet. As part of the program to reduce electricity usage during peak periods, electricity buyers have saved more than $700 million since the start of 2023 till the middle of this year. And now more firms can participate in this scheme by tapping on their battery storage systems during the day and charging them up at night. By nudging consumers to shift to off-peak periods, we avoid running more expensive power generation units during peak hours and thus save costs at the system level. In the long run, this will help us reduce investments in units that are largely required just to meet peak demand. This will also improve system stability and reliability by relieving stress on the grid during high demand periods and unplanned outages. Under the program, firms must reduce their electricity consumption by at least 0.1 megawatt within three minutes of being activated. Those that fully deliver on their commitments will receive incentives, while others that deliver less than 80% of energy savings will incur a penalty. One analyst says this will help reduce peak loads and ensure that households have a continuous supply of electricity. So most of the time, uh, a lot of uh, power plant or, or the supply side is actually based on the peak load demand. So by reducing the peak load demand, we can actually sort of like reduce the potential need for you know, additional power plant. So we can just focus on renewing or, or actually just replacing uh, current power plant with a lower carbon technology. Mr. E adds, the program's expansion is timely as the country transforms its energy strategy. 
Well, the Energy Market Authority has issued a grant call for industry players to co-fund and conduct feasibility studies on capturing and storing carbon in the power sector. It's part of EMA's efforts to achieve Singapore's 2050 net zero emissions target while meeting its growing demand for energy. Power sector carbon capture and storage, or CCS, captures the carbon dioxide emissions produced when power is generated. Well, this minimizes what is released into the atmosphere. Such technologies will allow Singapore to use its existing natural gas infrastructure to achieve its decarbonization goals, rather than start from scratch with other low-carbon alternatives like biofuels or geothermal energy. The ground call aims to study two possible pathways, both of which involve storing CO2 underground.